Hallelujah. Zende beda baharas. We give you the praise, Lord. We give you the honor, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, my Father. Thank you, my glorious God. Hallelujah. Nothing will cloud your glory this time. Nothing. You are bound to excel. You are bound to move in speed. You are bound to move in acceleration in this season. I, I thank God for many of you. Hallelujah. This is the hour. This is the moment. If you are joining, begin to join. Begin to invite people. Hallelujah. You will begin to see the things of God begin to take place in your life. Miracles are about to begin. Miracles are about to begin in your life. Hallelujah. Your life will never be the same again. You are about to testify. Your life is about to begin. It's about to begin. It's about to begin. About to begin. Amen. Praise God. One of the things we see, thank God for um, the passing away of uh, Billy Graham. We celebrate him. What a great, 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 great uh, patriot, reviver, mantle. Very powerful and very God used him marvelously. Amen. As a good example in winning souls around the world. Hallelujah. Um, as I begin to think, um, what what will happen and what is the message, amen, that the Lord has for us today? Hallelujah. One of the things you must understand is in this season, God has something apportioned for you. Somebody's apportioned for you. Hallelujah. Amen. There are mighty visitations that God is going to release upon your life. Hallelujah. You get yourself ready. Amen. Hallelujah. I want you to open yourself up in the realm of the spirit for every plan of the wicked of the every plan of the wicked. Every assignment of hell for your life today will be destroyed, will be abolished in the name of Jesus Christ. May God crown you with his glory. May God crown you with visitations of the spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. Are you hearing me today? Hallelujah. And we're going to we're going to do some certain prayers even probably during the weekend. Amen. Hallelujah. Get ready. And uh, and I know that some of you are just um, literally, literally um, 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 let me just open it. Let me just say this. How many of you have a testimony? You have testimony right now. You want to say testimony? Is anybody? Hallelujah. Praise God. Nobody? Good morning. Okay. She wouldn't pay, but yet, um, doing evil stuff to try to get us to get to have to pay the money back. And so we finally got a evicted out, and then she tried to come and sue us. Yes. For over three thousand dollars, but um, it cost us like two court cases going back and forth. But um, I I know the judge, the guy would work through the judge because this judge was new and doesn't really not really good, but um. Was able to see through the lies that they were saying mm -hmm. and dismiss the court case. So um, that lady got to talk to them. Like, she's like, that's mad. That's like, oh, you know, she's really nice. But then once the judge said, like, she's going to rule in our favor, she's like blaming the, the system, blaming the judge. Yes. The last court case. And she's just very upset. But she wants to just do criminal, whatever, try to say we're committed fraud or whatever. But I know it's in God's hands, but I want to thank God for. Delivering us from that situation because who knows what this lady would have tried to do in the house yes. or, or, or criminal. I thank God for that. Oh, praise God. Praise God. Anybody else? Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> this is my sister. Good morning. Uh -huh. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Yes, my name is Delmarine Dowie. Okay. And I just want to say. I thank God for this great group, and also, I would like you all to pray for me because someone stole my car from in front of my house about two months ago. Mm. And when they were talking about the spirit, then I believe it's a mountain spirit that came and took the car. Wow. Where do you live? And then, I live in Atlanta, Georgia. Okay. And also, I would like you all to pray because I wasn't working for 14 months and I just got the job last year. Mm, okay. Um, last year, uh, last year, November the 2nd. Mm. My house mortgage 
just stayed. I was in pain, no market, and I went to a bankruptcy because of the equity that I have in the house. They cancel it, and now they want me to come out of the house. And I prayed and fast about it, and I believe in God that we got favor to stay in the house because I just have a new grandbaby, first grandbaby. So and I this is a yes, and this is a testimony or a prayer request. Prayer request. That is a prayer request. Okay, I'm asking for that testimonies now. Me. I'm asking for testimonies oh. now. And the prayer request just test me. All right. Hallelujah. Um, which one? Um, we are the same number that I'm talking. Um, six one two seven zero one five nine eight three. Write it down. Is it six one two? Okay. Put it on your phone. Six one two. Seven hold zero. On day, hold on. Hold on. Okay, thank you. All right. Hey, my sister from uh, Laurel, Maryland. Hallelujah. Can you testify? Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Sorry. Hello. Yes, go ahead. Good morning. Good morning. Yes. Um, um, actually, I started um, dialing into this prayer line not too long ago, actually. Probably, I'm not sure if it's even two weeks yet. Um, and um, it's just been a very powerful um, effect on my personal life, in terms of my spiritual life, actually. Uh, I joined around about the time ministry was about to start do the three day fast and I was a little bit hesitant because I'd never actually done a three day continuous fast and to be mm. honest fast, fasting had been quite a bit of a challenge for me uh, you know, going through it on a daily basis was quite challenging so I couldn't even conceive mm. doing three days continuously without eating food and so I kind of prayed because Something was drawing me to do it. I just, so I prayed and I said to the Holy Spirit, you know how I've been struggling with fasting, but the thought of three days of food is almost unthinkable for me. To, and I didn't want to start and not finish it. Um, so I prayed and I kind of wasn't quite sure I wanted to do it. But in any case, in the end, I asked, I prayed a prayer. I kept joining and praying you know, with everybody. Um, and then I prayed the prayer, so Holy Spirit, if you would like me to join this prayer, uh, I want you, when I wake up in the morning, which is the first day that I start, that I will feel full and feel like I've eaten on the whole day. Yes. And when I woke up that morning, I felt so full, like I had been eating, and I didn't eat in my dreams or any of that stuff. Mm -hmm. So I knew that was a sign that God wanted me. So I started doing it. The first day, it was amazing. The second day, it was the third day that I, I um, had a bit of a challenge in the morning. I knew the enemy was coming to so praying. Mm -hmm. But to cut a long story short, I was able to do the entire three-day fast without food. That is unbelievable. That mm -hmm. is the first time in my life. So for me, it was such a great testimony. And then right after I ended that week, we ended that fast. I started feeling this powerful anointing. It was, and it's still going on. When I am praying, the anointing of God hits me. It is unbelievable. I cannot even describe mm, it to a third mm, party. Mm. So I want to give God the praise. And I know, I almost feel like God led me, literally led me to Pastor Bahiri at the time he wanted me to do it, that major fast, because I 
needed the fun mm -hmm. for me to step into the next level. And I didn't realize it until afterwards. So for me, this is a powerful testimony. I know a lot of people, we tend to give testimonies about material things. But for me, it's a powerful spiritual testimony because it's preparing me for the next level. It's preparing me for the next step. So I want to give God the praise and all of the glory. And I also wanted to thank you, Prophet Bahiri, because anybody who leads other people to their next spiritual level, it is far more important than any material thing that you can ever get. Because from the spiritual, the material birth. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to thank you especially because of the way you are, you're a, you're a God chaser, you're, you're all calling you. Anybody who encounters you begins to chase you god more begins to pray more begins to delve in to me that is a mark of a man who's truly of god so amen. i want to give god the praise for this ministry and i bless all of you amen hallelujah no god, god bless you hallelujah glory to god any other person Good morning, God bless you. How are you? Okay. Can you can you can you speak very clearly? I can hear you. We can hear you. I can hear you clearly. Okay. my recent experience with the last fast from January, from December to January. Okay. It was a very awesome, a very transforming life time for me spiritually, financially, and spiritually. Yes. Because the prayers that you were praying about different things and different era on the prayer line, the Lord opened doors that and changed situation in my financial life that I was not expecting to uh, to answer so quickly. Not that we are not expecting God to answer uh, so quickly, but it just manifests. As soon as the prayer was finished, it manifested. Mm. And I did call talk to you about it, but I mean, I just want everybody to know on the prayer line that this has been a very, very anointed prayer line, although um, some of us do talk about uh, mental experience, um, there are many of us, especially in us, we are experiencing such transformation in our life, in our daily life, going to work, in our church, for our family, in our finances, and even in our, um, in, in our team, the Holy Spirit needs. Yes. You know what I mean? Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I mean, yes, good morning. God bless you. We can't hear you now. Speak louder. Are you lying now? I am. I don't know. Maybe something about this one. Hold on. All right. Praise God. All right. Okay. All right. Praise the Lord. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Who is this now? <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. We thank God for his love. Yes. Hallelujah. We thank God for his love and his glory. And his presence. And your life will never be the same again. Amen. We thank God for what he's about to do and he's about to do in your life. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Somebody say the mantle of the Spirit. <laughs> Look, I will stir up the waters and begin to pray in the Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. Ilay <laughs> 
Shanda Rabba Rebbe Bega Rebbe Bia Barando de Bios. El Rebbe Rebbe Bega Rebbe Rebbe Bega Rebbe Bia Baradish. Rada Rabba Rabba Bega Barando de Bia Baradish. El Brado Rebbe Bega Rebbe Bega Rebbe Bega Rebbe Bega Rebbe Bia Baradish. El Abando Rabba Rebbe Bega Rebbe Bega Barando de Bios. Zaga Daba Daba Baga Baba 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 Rebbe Bia Baradish. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We give you the praise. Hallelujah. Amen. One of the things you must understand is that there is something beautiful. You are highly lifted up. There is no one like you. Ale, 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 alleluia. You are highly lifted up. There is no one like you. Ale, 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 alleluia. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. What a glorious God this season. Amen. And some of you are already seeing some changes and some effects. Hallelujah. You're hearing the sound of my voice. Hallelujah. There are many things that have taken place recently. Amen. In the, in the spirit. And also, I really thank God for it. Many times when God has appointed you to receive something from on high, there is always a time and a moment you receive that thing. There is always a time for it. Amen. We learned something that um, Jesus, I mean, um, Joseph was kept in a place of waiting. And at that time he was in a place of waiting. He was in a prison. Um, he could have been in somebody's house. But the Bible says we waited till the word, his word came. Hallelujah. His word came. And when he was in the prison dwelling there, he was, we went through a lot of trials before that time. But the prison was a place to prepare him. It seemed like a place of delay, but God began to use the prison, amen, hallelujah, to also to re reflect back, to be able to let go, to be able to really think and evaluate how people have affected him, hallelujah. Mm. Amen, hallelujah. Praise God. God bless you, sir. Amen, hallelujah. So we begin to understand how Joseph I mean, was in this prison, was in the place of waiting. He was kind of caught up from the outside world and out from his friends. Hallelujah. And so while he was there, he began to meet new friends. Amen. It seemed like these were people who were condemned already. Hallelujah. By the, by the law. But while they were in there dwelling in there, I believe he began to worship. I believe he began to see God's face. I believe there were other things. And the Bible says he obtained favor, you know. Um, he, in the in the place he was a leader god bible says for god was with him so even in the prison god was with him and it was just a matter of time for god to show up hallelujah till his word came till his word came hallelujah there are many people that have been in a waiting season they've been in a hiding point they've been in a, in a place that have been covered this looks like a veil has been over them and it looks like as if uh, they've not been approved jesus for the past 29 years or years old he has been in a waiting period hallelujah been in a waiting period just wondering lord when is my time going to take place hallelujah he knew that it was a child of destiny he knew something was about to happen but he was just following the father who was a carpenter hallelujah just hiding and dwelling and just waiting for instruction and so there was a time that came and the lord says this is the hour amen and when this guy had passed away john the baptist hallelujah when this john the baptist had passed away something happened god now brought him back hallelujah john the baptist left herod was killed and uh, before you know it, Jesus, who was doing in a shadow form of ministry, it may begin to emerge because now the little barriers has been removed. Hallelujah. When God wants to elevate you, he makes sure, hallelujah, that the very, very voice that has been there in the Yekin Gosiah that I saw the Lord. We begin to see something now. Father, in the name that is above every other name. I thank you, Father, for your presence. I thank you, Father, for your power. I thank you, Father, for who you are. Lord, as we get into your word today, I pray in the name of Jesus that the river of your presence will begin to flow. Lord, I pray that you will strengthen everyone. You will strengthen every listener. Let the power of your spirit, oh God, rest upon each individual in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for the glory cloud to be released upon you people of God. 
Father, in the name of Jesus, let your people be strengthened. Let the, let the grace come upon us today. Let the revelation of your word come upon us today. Father, I pray that you open, you open the mysteries like a river. Let it flow into every life. Let every heart be transformed by your spirit. Let every heart, oh God, begin to fall in love with you. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will begin to you will begin to arrest every power of the enemy that will try to intercept or interrupt the word of God. The spirit of the living God, quicken your people now. Quicken your spirit in the life of your people. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. One of the things we're going to understand is that, hallelujah, <clears throat> Elijah came to a place. I read from, um, let, me, let me read from um, verse 7. Oh, okay. All right. I read from verse 19 first kings chapter 19 verse 1 first kings chapter 19 verse 1 hallelujah praise god he said and he have said unto jezebel he have told jezebel all that elijah had done whither how he has slain all the prophets with the sword then jezebel sent a messenger unto elijah sent a messenger unto elijah stop there they're going to ask God, Lord, every messenger that has been sent by the devil, every messenger that's been instructed by Jezebel against my life, every, say, every evil messenger, every messenger with an evil message, there are messengers that has been sent, robbers giving instruction to hijack your glory. They are robbers. Even when you see manifestations of your dream, those are not the strong men. They are operating under the instructions by the strong men. You're going to pray. Every messenger that has been released against my life, every messenger hallelujah mm, every messenger that's been released against me every evil messenger with a negative message ah my father as i begin to pray let that messenger let that messenger let that messenger be chased away by the power of god go ahead and begin to pray lord every messenger with an evil message towards my life my father by your blood by your fire let them be chased away let them be chased away let their way be dark and slippery in the name of jesus Hallelujah. Rabba Baba Rabba Kashanda Baha. Ele Mandora Bobo Gomboranderi Baby Apias. In Jesus' name we pray. Verse 2. Then Eli and Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. When this guy heard his voice, when J Elijah, who was very powerful, perform so much miracles begin to hear a voice hallelujah something happened verse 3 we say when he saw that he arose and went for his life and came to Beersheba, which belonged to judah and left his servant there this elijah got to a place whereby when he heard and that message inspired by the devil infused by the devil the devil's plan and imagination this guy could not even pray he could not even think i don't know what happened why Jezebel was fearless why Jezebel was so reverent something shook him something shook him because of an, an evil message I believe every time the devil wants to attack you, he attacks you with fear and every time you see those things, these are, these are the times to to break forth in the place of prayer, hallelujah somebody say break forth this is the time where you go into tongues and you begin to pray to you pray, especially when your spirit is disturbed. Pray to you pray to you pray until you conquer. You must be able to prevail. Something is not right when you get a wrong message or you get a message that dampens your spirit. Sometimes you can be doing something, all of a sudden you just feel something affects your spirit. It's like it's like it's like a valley kind of that a valley experience you go through. In the spirit you feel it's like your joy just goes out of the window once you feel that a bad news is coming start praying in tongues to intercept whatever plan that the enemy is preparing against your life hallelujah 
And when he saw that he arose and went for his life and came to Bathsheba, look at verse 4. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat under a journey pear tree. He requested for himself that he might die and said, It is enough. Now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. As he lay and slept under the journey pear tree, behold, an angel came, touched him, and he said unto him, Arise and eat. Look at what is going on here. And he looked, and behold, there was a cake and a bake baked on coals and cruise of water on his head, at his head. And he, he did eat and drank and lay down again. And the angel of the Lord again came, second time, touched him and said, Arise, eat, because the journey is too great for thee. And he arose and did eat and drink and went in the strength of that meat forty days, forty nights, unto Mount Horeb of God. This Mount Horeb, we've been in Mount Horeb, in close to Egypt, between Egypt and Israel. We've we've been there. It takes four and a half hours to climb up the mountain, four and a half hours to come down. What a what a strenuous walk! Hallelujah. Now we see something. This guy was drained. This guy, that message disturbed him. That message brought a negative spirit. In fact. It wasn't just a message. Remember this wasn't a phone call. It was a letter. It seemed like a letter or it seemed it wasn't express it wasn't well explained to us. But let's go back there. Mm. Okay, he sent a messenger. So it was an outcry. Hallelujah. So the outcry that was released, something happened in the realm of the spirit. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. So in the realm of the spirit, there was an outcry, there was an outburst. Of revelation there was an outburst of the word of god hallelujah and so this guy came i was crying and I was screaming what elijah L M jezebel would do unto elijah and he got so intimidated by that voice these were worshippers of baal this was a spirit of the gods that was so angry that the prophets of baal has been slain so the gods were was ready to use jezebel to slay elijah it was a holy contest it was a demonic contest but near Elijah ran, he was frustrated, was depressed, discouraged. An angel showed up and gave him food to eat to revive himself. He said, son, if you are depressed, yes, what's going to happen? Take communion. And he began, so if this guy began to partake on something that was divine, and the Bible said the strength of God came. I remember the, I remember my spiritual father said, was saying one time, he was sent to a, um, a family. One of these days he was praying, he received a letter from a family, and this family was oppressed seriously by the landlord, who has to happen to be an Hindu priest. And this landlord terrorized them, and uh, one of the days, uh, this was going fine, one day, um, the landlord did something to them, and the, uh, the, the couple, um, the man arose and confronted the landlord and says, you, can, you will not do this again. It so happened that the couple was, uh, they are Christians. But after this confrontation, something happened. The landlord says, you see, for the next 21 days, you will not sleep. I will deal with you since you are in this house. And um, every day they could not sleep. Every day. And if, even if they want to sleep for five minutes, a demon will arise you know, in the family and begin to terrorize them. Children will be crying, all kinds of... I mean, it was very brutal. So they wrote a letter to Sadhu. Um, if you don't know him, Sadhu Sonda Severaj. He prophesied Donald Trump. Hallelujah. So they wrote a letter to him, say, please, we need help. And so he read, you know, he gets a lot of requests like that. Um, and when he saw this letter particular, he shook his head. He said, I don't know if I should go. But anyways, the Lord says, go. So he obeyed. And he went for the, uh, to the family. When he went to visit the family, um, he spoke to them, was having fun, um, you know, fellowship with them. They, they, according to the Indian culture, when you fellowship, you drink tea, cup of tea. That's the way they welcome you. So, during after that, he now went um, to his bed to read some Bible scriptures. As he got into his bed, an angel showed up with a message from heaven. He says, 12 a.m., the heaven demands you to lift your hands up on your knees and worship him. He looked at the angel, like shocked, because it was a sense of urgency. Again, Mandate from heaven and get on your knees, lift your hands up, surrender to heaven. 
12 a.m. sharp and worship me. We worship him. And the angel disappeared. So he knew that the hour has come. Then he was asking the Holy Spirit, what do I do? The Holy Spirit now responded and began to express to him that the Hindu priest is aware that this sadhu has come to the house. And so many of the uh, graveyard spirits, many of the Hindu spirits has been consulted in India to kill this sadhu. And that was why the Lord says, don't pray, just worship me. So the man of God, the prophet of God, just uh, told them to go and sleep. He didn't tell them the battle that was going to happen because they would be scared. So he told them to go and sleep and whatever it is. Where they want to go to sleep, the man of God went to his room and knelt down. 12 o'clock. As he knelt down and lifted up his hands, he saw angels getting ready. He began to worship. Then he saw the Hindu priest brought, brought a piece of a jawbone and began to knock all the graveyards in in the, in the part of town in India. As he knocked the graveyards, these gra these demons begin to arise, and uh, they arose with all kinds of um, metal, 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 metal equipments and all kinds of stuff. And they had so much weapons, and they were so big and giant. I mean, of them, and so they were they were moving with speed. And then before you know it, he saw that they were all gathering in the in the in, in the heavens. And they got into a combat with this, uh, with the angels also, with the angels of God. But before this ha happened, 12 o'clock sharp, an angel showed up with a long drawn sword, showed up in front of him. And all the angels said was, ready, sir. He said for the first time, he trembled within because the countenance of the angel, number one, is 15 foot tall. Number two, he had a very... He had a warrior's look on his, on his a warrior's look, and it was so 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 scary that he didn't even know what to say. The angel just said, "Ready, sir." And he, what do I say? He was looking at the angel. The angel is looking at him, waiting for command. And the Holy Spirit whispered to him, "Tell him, proceed now." So he looked at the angel, said, "Proceed." And then the angel just zoom, and he was watching. He was just watching the whole thing. The angel went straight to the heavens. And this fight began between the angel, because this angel had other angels under his command. So he was the chief angel. And the angels began to fight, to clash with the other with the, with, the, with the other principalities and began to fight and fight and fight. And while the man of God was on his knees, singing to God, You are awesome in this place, mighty God. You are awesome in this place. Abba Father, you are worthy of our praise. To you our lives we raise. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. When he sang this song, he began to sing other songs. Hallelujah. One hour passed. I think it was close to like one o'clock. All of a sudden, he saw the chief angel bring out like a sword. He has been fighting with the sword. Took out the sword and cut off the head of the chief ruling demon. And the head just rolled down. And he would just say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. When he heard footsteps and he opened his eyes and then he saw this chief angel. He saw the chief angel in front of him. But on the sword, it was dripping blood. It was real. It wasn't vision of it, it was real and he looked at the angel mission accomplished it was a little bit puzzled he has the, he has the Holy Spirit what do I do? he said proceed he now said proceed the angel now went and sent it back to heaven that opened his eyes from that day three weeks later that Hindu priest died. He got swollen, sickness, and he died. He began to explain to us what exactly took place. Before he went and traveled to this family house, he was praying in his place. The Lord asked him to fast and fast with milk for seven days. And he was fasting, just drinking milk. 
And usually we have Jesus visiting. And so in this account, Jesus entered on the third day of his fast and brought chapati. You know chapati? And he brought some chapati and he brought some, um, some, some, some tea for him to drink. And Jesus told him to sit down. And he looked at Jesus. Ah, you told me to fast and now you're bringing the food. He says, no, this, I'm, I don't think this, this, this is really Jesus. So he kind of tried to pray to get in, in, from the Holy Spirit who was really ministering to him. If it's Jesus or it was a false God. And the Holy Spirit said, this was Jesus. And Jesus began to say, listen to me. This food is not ordinary food. This is the food that will cause you to go in the strength of the power. He said, because you're about to confront some spirits. You're about to confront some powers. Some demonic entities. So I'm giving you this food to eat, to partake. He said, eat of this food. So this man of God ate of this food. And so sometimes, you see, when, when we see ourselves in a dream, and you see us, you see, you begin to see that the devil begins to give you food in a dream. I passed that stage now, whereby it's food in a dream. I passed that stage. Uh, that doesn't affect me anymore. But I'm saying, for you who are listening to me, hallelujah, you see that <clears throat> such and such takes place, and you see yourself eating food in the dream. This is an attack of the devil against your life. It's an impartation of weakness. One greatest sign when you know that you have ate something that is not right, you shouldn't eat. Is that if you go to the restaurant or you go to some places and you give you food that you know that is unclean, you won't know it's unclean until you eat it, right? Number one, your dreams begin to change. Number two, um, you begin to get upset or get very angry. Number three, um, you begin to feel very lethargic. Number four, you become um, you, you lose your ability to fast. You, you you don't want to fast that much anymore. Number five, you become you become insensitive to the spirit of God. It's like you begin to lose your sensitivity. That is what happens when a man has really kind of lost the edge of his fire. You begin to wonder what happened, what happened. You are just slow. Your prayers become mechanic. You don't want to really pray like ineffectively. You want to pray, but something is hindering you. Something is blocking it. There is like a veil. Know that you have eaten something that is not good. Hallelujah. Thereby you have to take communion and really purge yourself and cleanse yourself from that. You need to really pray and cleanse yourself from what? From that. Praise God. So, anyway, so when we see, so this is what happened to this, um, um, so Sadhu, but, but when you eat a food from the Lord, when it's from divinely from the Lord, you get so fired up. You get so charged up. You get so revived on the inside of you that something is right. The food of the devil is an embodiment of death when it comes upon you. Is it, is it, it provokes all the evil inside of you. It provokes, it swallows the light of God in you. It swallows your gifting. It releases the spirit of rejection upon you. Something is not right. But when you begin to receive this heavenly divine food, it releases favor, it releases your strength, it, it activates your intellect, it begins to, it makes you full of joy. My God, it activates the faith of God inside of you. It does so many things uniquely. That is why God always asks us to take our communion. It's essential. When you take communion every day, you clean out what the enemy has put inside of you and you take the blood transfusion of the Lord inside of you. So you are revived. You are strengthened every day. But people don't, people don't know you can take that at home. They only wait for a priest to feed you this food. So we see Sadhu, when he got there, this was one of the secrets. Hallelujah. Let's like I'm playing an instrument now. You do it in faith. Hallelujah. You can even take it twice a day. You can even take it five times a day. Communion. But every time you do it, the Bible says do it, do it what? In remembrance of me. Don't just take communion, but take it what? While your eyes is focusing on the cross. While your eyes is what? While your mind and your imagination, amen, has wrapped itself around God. You use your imagination, the garden of your imagination, to put Jesus in your garden. Hallelujah. You can buy juice and communion, yes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen? So, praise God. Whatsoever you do, whatsoever you pray on, the Spirit of God will manifest His glory. You can pray on water. 
you can pray on water and my mother before she passed away god bless her that's what she would do she would pray on water water in the jar water for everybody she kept praying praying read the book of psalms hallelujah pray and pray and pray and pray speaking tongues for a long time sometimes two hours three hours on the water on a gallon of water and all of us will start drinking the water oh my god <laughs> you'll feel the glory of god enter you'll feel cleansed on within because the power of god has entered the water hallelujah but you see this is what happened so what i'm trying to explain to you is this um <clears throat> Let's read further quickly. Let's wrap up. Let's wrap this up. Hallelujah. And then verse 9. He came thither into a cave and lodged there. Behold, the word of the Lord came to him and he said unto him, What doest thou? You see that? The word of the Lord came. Now, that is what happens. When you eat the strength of God's food, you be, it breaks the power of discouragement. There was a sound that he heard that killed his faith. There was a sound of, 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 of the voice of demons that was screaming at him. That is what happens. When that happens, you, you feel weak spiritually. You lose your enthusiasm. You lose your joy. You lose your fire. You lose the, something that breaks your motivation. Because you're not seeing the spirit. You're not seeing what's happening. But because you hear the strange voice that is not from God, it can kill your faith. It can kill your zeal. If Elijah was in our time, I'm sure he would have tuned into television. He would have tuned into YouTube and watched some 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 gospel the bible says the words that i speak they are what they are spirits and their life it's not every voice you should listen to not every voice there are some phone calls you can pick now and you will feel so discouraged there are some phone calls that are so inspired by the devil and these people are even anointed these people are even priests these people are even i have i even called by god but you see just because it sounds good doesn't mean that it's been derived from prayer. The Bible says the words that I speak, they are spirits and they are life. Is the, this is the only way in the scripture that was described like this. The words that I speak, they are spirits and they are life. In other words, they can be bad spirits or they can be evil spirits. Words can be influenced by spirits. The words can be influenced by death. Words can come from the fountain of life. When anger has a spirit, anger is a, an unholy emotions. Anger is an is a is a is a is a, is a emotions. That can be released to cause judgment or to cause a change in the life of a person when god was angry you know something will happen when the devil is angry i expect something to happen so when people get angry you know that a decision is about to be made emotionally except they hold their emotions I've always said it. Anger is like an incense. Anger is derived from pride. But when a man gets angry, it can invite divine authority to execute judgment. Or it can invite divi uh, demonic authority to execute what? Demonic judgment. So when a man begins to work, exercise anger, there is an evil energy being released. So the demon that's been lying dormant now has a room now to operate in full, in, in full scale. If a man of God is angry and provoked, he can release a curse and God will back it. Hallelujah. So, praise God. So, there are words that when you hear, especially if, if you have listened to people who are agents of the devil let me use that word agents of the devil particularly if the devil want to make you an his agent or his disciple number one you'll be eating food in the dream you'll be drinking blood in fact it will make sure that you are having sex 
just to pollute your temple. And once your temple is polluted, you'll be an expert in bringing confusion in discussions. You can say one thing, and all of a sudden, it can blow the whole conversation. You might say one or two things. It can make the person so angry. In fact, if a guy or a, a woman have never slapped you, but because of that little thing you say, there's so much spirit in that little word that you said. It can provoke the listener that is filled with love towards you. And they won't even know what has what made them to react in a way that they want to slap you. I've seen certain people like that. And when they talk, you don't even know. It, it pulls all the the anger inside of you that you don't even know where it came from. It just pulls it out and you begin to manifest in an ungodly manner. Because the spirits that abide in such vessels, the spirits that took those little words and brought it to ears are so strong and so provocative that you don't, you don't even know what made you act like this. Because once they begin to talk, like, why are you talking like? Why are you sounding like this? Amen. But when it's of God, when it's of God, it's so it won't be provocative. It will be convicting, convicting. The word convicting, convicting to what to righteousness, convicting of the evil. Like you feel really bad. The love of God goes so deep within. In fact, the, when God begins to rebuke you, one of the first things you feel is the fear of God. The fear of God takes hold of you. You tremble at His presence. When every time you feel the fear of God, you also feel the love of God to draw you back. Fear trembles, makes you to repent, makes you to come from your throne of self so when this fear becomes so strong in you you don't want to walk away from God you don't want to be rebellious remember this when a man speaks out of anger and is in his spirit you will feel you will feel the authority of God you will feel the love of God you will feel the ability to even come back and repent but when it's of the devil, you feel strong condemnation. You feel the heaviness of evil. Behind every strong anger from the flesh is behind every serpent. Behind every anger, is, there's a strong serpent behind it. Behind every mouth that provokes a man to anger or provokes a woman to anger to a, a level of darkness. That you wonder, what are you talking like this? It's a level of what? Serpent. Strong, a strong demon behind it. In those days, I was very brutal. There's one lady like that. When she talks, you know that this one is not right. When, when she talks, you wonder, are you in your right senses? So one day she did it many times. She did it one day, one day, two day, three. I remember that time. Four years ago. One day, when she was on the phone saying this, I just said, you sapetine spirit, I rebuke. <laughs> oh boy. That was the last time she, that was the last time she wanted to argue again. She called again and that thing's about to behave. We put that in order. There are people who have sapper tongues, and you want to watch it. You want to be very careful. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. And so, this bad message, this bad message, brought Elijah to this place whereby he fell so down, so down, so down. And here we see. And verse 10, he said, and I have, I have been very jealous for the Lord, God of hosts, 
for the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, strewn down thine altars, slain thy prophets with sword. I, I, even I only am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And he said, Go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, a great and strong wind rent the mountains and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. Why was God showing all these signs? Okay, good question. What if I'm tired? What if I'm angry because of the devil's reaction towards you? How do you guard yourself? Once you're angry, remember this. Anger is an only incense. It's an, it's, sorry. Anger is a demonic incense. Why worship is a good incense you send to God. Anger is a demonic incense you send as an invitation to demons. You might be very holy, you might be fasting. But if your anger is unholy, you know they have holy anger and holy anger. When your anger is unholy, it begins to attract spirits against your life. Praise God. It can attract some evil spirits against you. Anger. And once when you be, when this invitation of spirits begin to come into your life, how do you notice this? When you are so angry, you begin to feel vibrations. You begin to feel things. You want to do things to prove that you're really angry. And this and that. And the person is still laughing. Or even when the person is not angry. But there's something that's trying to move you. Know something. How do you stop it immediately? Play praise and worship very quickly. Very quickly. And if that person is getting very angry and is there, play worship. What is good anger and holy anger? Good anger, godly anger, is when you are very angry towards the devil. I told you that holy anger provokes you to the judgment of God to use your anointing. Remember, they were laughing at this man of God. You are bald head, you are bald head. The man cried out. And the Bible says that those guys, those kids, they died. Why? Because he, they, they provoked him to a place. They can provoke you to a place and a holy anger comes out of you. Now, it's of you to react in the flesh. React in the flesh, meaning you take matters into your hand, you begin to say negative things that even demons can do. But when you are anointed on a fire, remember the man who was fasting. He finished a 40-day fast. And um, the children were playing around, the kids. And so he was playing with the pastor. You know how they, they play chess, chess. So he was playing with the pastor. He was getting very tired. And the pastor seemed as if he was defeating him. The pastor was actually, you know, um, the pastor was defeating him, you know, in, um, uh, what do you call it, um, in the game. And, um, yes. So while the pastor was defeating him, what happened? All of a sudden, his child was making noise. This guy was thinking to win. He has finished 40 days, but he was also hungry and whatever. And he's always winning that game, but for that reason, he was losing. So his, his son, 12, 13 years old, making noise and doing things, playing with the friend, and he shouted, Can you be quiet? And when he screamed, Can you be quiet? He didn't hear nothing again. After the game, he went, my son, where are you at? Uh, where are you at? Are you sleeping? He went there. Only to find out that the son is dumb. Cannot even express himself. Wanting the son to talk, could not talk. Because out of anger, that child spoke. I mean, out of anger, he spoke. And he forgot that the power of God was upon his mouth. So it, it released and unleashed the power of God to silence his mouth. Who answered the prayer? The Bible says, Thou shalt decree a thing, and it shall be established. There is a kingly authority when you go on an extreme fast, meaning whatever you say, God will give to you. There are realms that when you have not fasted, you just pray. It will take matter of 
days or weeks or months to God to answer the prayer. But when a kingly anointing comes upon you, you make a decree. It happens immediately. Why? Why? Because your tongue. Oh my goodness. You mean I didn't you mean I didn't post the prayer today? That's why people are asking. My God. Oh my goodness. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, I mean, so when this mantra is upon your life, hallelujah, you speak immediately, it comes to pass. One time I told you, sometimes God will allow such things. So that man, he had to pray and pray and pray fast till God reversed the thing that closed the mouth of this guy, of his son. God had to open his mouth. But God allowed that. Why? God allowed it so that this guy himself we understand what has happened to his tongue but he, he will understand that there's a level of authority he needs to guard himself i told you i was in a four hours prayer prayer and i was praying and i beat my bible well, one of those times that i really i was really radical when i was young amen and this was 2004 so i beat my bible because I was watching a movie and I saw how they were training this um, Rothweiler. Is it Rothweiler? Yeah. Rothweiler or pit, pit, pit bull. And they would give this uh, pit bull a bone. And this pit bull will bite the bone suspended in the air and it will stay on the air for a long time. And I'm wondering, what is this? And the Lord said, this is how Christians should bite the word of God in them. And God began to open the word of God to me, how Elijah, how God gave Isaiah. He said, I put my word in your mouth. E Ezekiel, I ate the scroll. It was bitterness in my belly while it was sweet in my mouth. The word of God, they, they beat the word of God. Like, and God says, beat the word of God. If, if you must prophesy like the prophets, that the word of God, not prophesy, reading, re listen to me this to me let me let me just say this to you let me just say this to you a prophet who works in so much pride and arrogance they've walked away from their holiness when i listen to a prophet the first thing i want to listen to is what their level of consecration that's what i want to hear i don't want to hear you calling toss the lord you look at one guy you start reading their mail call their names that does not interest me that's gift that's gift. And many generations are seduced by that. Seduced by that. Listen to me. If voodoo priests can leave, leave their coven and put on a prophetic rope and come before you and start talking, they, will, they, don't, they don't have to talk the Bible. They just have to call your number, your last name, your first name. And you will believe them. Don't be deceived by that nonsense. Those are gifts. The devil has his own gift. If you want to know a true servant of God, number one, the higher God lifts them up, the higher they come down. Meaning, such ones you can abuse them. Meaning, such ones you can slap them. Meaning, such ones you can insult them and you won't get a backlash. I don't mean you go and insult men of God. But the true men of God, if you insult them, you don't get a real backlash. They keep quiet. Some of them, if you manipulate them, they are easy to be manipulated. They are easy to be shouted upon. You can spit on them easily. These are real men of God. You can do some things and you can go scot-free. Those are real men of God. But the other ones, the, the, the ones that are claimed to be, the ones that are wolves, who they, feed, they say they are prophets or they are apostles, the ones that lost titles, those ones, you don't call them, you don't call them prophet that day. You are in trouble. You don't call them apostle. You are in trouble. The day you don't greet them or celebrate them, you are in trouble. The day you humiliate them, you're in trouble. The day you slap them, they'll slap you back. The day you just call them names, they will they will destroy your name before people. Those ones are not those are those are not prophets. Those those are revengeful nature. Those are wolves inside of them. They are beast-like nature, beasts inside of them. But the men of God, you slap, you can easily talk down, 
you can easily hang up the phone you can easily ignore them you can easily whatever it is and it's like they don't have their they don't have their they don't have respect self respect it's like something that will be taken away from them it's because they are walking the lifestyle of brokenness they might not be all crucified all the way but these ones you can do some things and you can get away from them you can get away with it it's because these are sheep my sheep hear my voice and a stranger they will not follow but when a wolf is calling your last name calling your first name calling this once a month you do it's like turn down fire and you are hearing accurately the bible says by their fruits it is by their by their giftings by their what by their fruits you will know them by their what fruits you will know them I'm waving, I'm waving out of the message. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. By what? Their fruits. Mm. Hallelujah. By their fruits. I want to show you something very quick. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And so, amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. How do you become humble? That's a very good question. Brother, you are, you are asking so many questions. All you guys are asking good questions. Praise God. Amen. So, I love I love that question. Very good question. I'm going to answer your question now. Hallelujah. They say what? By their fruits. By their fruits. By their fruits. Look at what it says. They say what? By their fruits, which is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Meaning, they have a, they, they, they have, I'm not talking about the one that has a form of godliness. I'm talking about the ones that are genuine, that are real, that are honest, that are sincere. Real prophets, they are more relaxed, they are more sincere, they are real. You can relate with them. The first ones, hmm. Is an outward appearance. The love. Ah, I don't want to even go there. Amen. But for you to hear the voice of God, you must have crucified your nature to the extent of whereby God is able to speak to you. You must have prayed to some certain level that even your 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 body, amen, is subdued by prayers. Are you hearing me? And the word I, I, I did this, I did this. You are careful when you use the word I. You are careful when you talk about yourself because you know as a prophet not as a pastor is a prophet the prophet has the highest discipline it's like navy seal highest discipline in the realm of the spirit they have the highest demand of discipline so if you want to be a prophet you want to be a voice to the nations you have to discipline yourself to that dimension a prophet can be birth you can come through birth meaning god can be speaking to you from birth and god will require that sacrifice from you from birth or God on the other side can choose you. It doesn't mean you fasted or prayed, but you will still walk in that sacrificial life. God will still demand it. As he demanded Moses, pull your shoes, pull this, pull this. He demanded it. P put your 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 rod, drop it down. And it was turned to the rod uh, to turn to a snake. God God can do all that, can change your prophet overnight. Can put you in the wilderness. But if you must search for a prophet or a man of God always check on the consecrated life focus on the prize if they might be gifted after the gift ask them about their prize the price they paid that's how you discover a real man of god there's a price of suffering there's a price they're really running through and it's still fresh in their head still fresh when i prayed for three hours with the bible in my mouth and I was praying, Lord, put your word in my mouth. Because I read that scripture about Isaiah. 
and he puts his life coals in my tongue and he says now i say my god that's all i need put and i beat the bible put your put your word in my mouth put your word in my mouth put your word in my mouth i eat your word put your word in my mouth and i pray for three hours of course i get tired sometimes i pull the bible and i rest saliva dripping from my mouth i beat the pipe again Ugh. that's what i pray when my jaw was aching in i removed my bible i was like I was about to make tea and I lifted up my head. I saw a butterfly fly. And I don't know where the butterfly came from. You know, normally you see butterfly outside. This was inside the house. And I screamed, Fall! 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 And the butterfly just and dropped. When I looked, I was like, where's the butterfly? Let me pick it up. I mean, it didn't, it didn't come down like that. It just dropped like a rock. So I was looking at it. I was like, where's the butterfly? I couldn't find it. You know, when I, in that one, I was saying level butterfly fall, fall. It was actually going up. The butterfly was still flying higher. But suddenly, it just dropped. So when I checked, I didn't see any butterfly. The Lord says, now nah, I put my word in your mouth. Every time God puts his word in your mouth, you want to make sure that you understand the power he's giving to you. You know, when they, when, when, when you watch those movies, when a bullet or a gun, a good gun was given to them, they try to shoot to see the effect of it. So they understand the power that they have. So, so many times when I make decrees, it happens. It happens. Are you hearing me today? That's one of the things that the Lord will uh, uh, require from a prophet. Once the power of God is upon your mouth, so you got it. I remember I was working with a brother, a Spanish brother. This guy will always laugh. And, he will, and we're joking around. Oh, you will get fired. Oh, you will get fired. I will just be smiling. You get fired. You get fired. Every day he's saying it. Every day he's saying it. Every day he's saying it. Week after week. You go to the restroom. You come back. Oh, they'll get fired. I was like, so I just looked at him one day. I was angry, number one. Something was going on in my house. Number two, I had like too many phone calls. They were calling me over some, some percent things. I needed to answer. So this guy kept saying, oh, they'll fire you. So that day, I was I could not bear it anymore. In the, in the past, it was a joke. I just looked at him. I says, you will get fired. I don't know what happened. The next day was Thursday. We were all expecting him. I don't know what happened. He needed to take care of his daughter. He could not show up on the, 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 the Thursday. Friday came. They were asking for him. They didn't know what happened. The management called. They got him fired. Friday. That one, I said, whoa, I need to be careful. Because I like the guy. The guy is a good guy. But a word spoke, you see, you can, your words can be so defiled because you speak a lot of uh, F you, F you, F that, F that, F that. So there's no power in your tongue. The devil can use your words to cause pain in people. But when you are consecrated and anointed, you, you can, you guard it, you be careful. Because one word you say, that's it, it happens. It's established. Those days, I usually love men of God. Um, Benny Hinn was one of my inspirators. So when I watch Benny Hinn those days, nah, help me out. I watch Benny Hinn those days, he would say, Patch! And the whole place with everybody on the ground. So I went into a research. What is this thing about touch? Touch. So I look at the mirror. I said, touch. And nothing happened. Nothing happened. What is this? So when I started fasting, seven days dry, whatever, I said, Lord, put your power upon my tongue. Put your power on my tongue. Your power on my tongue. Your power. And, and sometimes, so when I'm in church and I want to pray for people, I said, give me your hand. Power. And the whole place, boom. And I said, wow, whoa, whoa, whoa. And so from there, I knew what was in my mouth. And I said, power of God, power of God, power of God, power of God. So when I, if I, if I were to speak, you could feel the whole place shake. Not because of what I'm saying, but because there was an, there is something in mind. Hallelujah. There is a grace that sits on us. So anyways, so when prophet Elijah says, let the fire fall, fire will fall. Because there is an unction upon his life. Praise God. Now, if you see what God was trying to do, he says what? Verse 11, 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 11. Now, 
based on the question when you were asking you were asking something about how do we how do we come to a place of humility number one number two number one is this amen to really understand your place of humility always understand this uh, amen don't 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 focus for instance now i'm focusing on i'm reading what the lord used me right now if i continue on this parole i begin to think on these things now remember this god said to uh, moses um, um, uh, rehearse the victories in the years of joshua the battle he fought now you do that especially when you're feeling discouraged you you rehearse what god has done through your life okay but the mistake is that people do is that you keep talking about it talking about it talking about it and how do you become your place of humility number one you enter into a place of worship so when people begin to celebrate what god has done through you enter into a place of praise so in other words you are distributing his love back to him you begin to thank god oh god thank you lord jesus and I give you praise now when you begin to worship god there is a shift of focus from yourself back to god you begin to really praise him and begin to really thank him and appreciate him from the depth of your heart god sees evaluates your heart remember that in case your heart is haughty or in case your heart is appreciative to what he has done in your life so once you begin to say lord i thank you for what you have done on the prayer line thank you for using me thank you for this and that god must always require his own offering from you and once you give him that offering thank you lord jesus sincerely even if your heart goes by mistake up again he knows that you are human but he knows that you have given him his glory and while you're worshiping he also pours his love Bible says love does not what puff it up he pours his love upon you and makes you just appreciate him ingratitude is arrogance when the love of God comes upon you, it makes you uh, uh, makes you to appreciate Him, makes you to thank God for His love. When you are elevated in anywhere, whoever praised you, whoever said thank you for being a blessing to me, you have the time and say, Lord, thank you for using me. Now, you don't just say thank you for using me. You make sure it comes from within. You make sure you 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 you, you go so deep, whereby it's become tearful in your eyes. Make sure you tell God, it's so real. Thank you for really using me, making an impact in this generation. Thank you for using me to bless my wife. Oh God, thank you. Oh God, thank you. Thank you for using me to put smiles on her face. And once you begin to share tears and you begin to say, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. God now releases a, a higher level of glory upon you. To walk in that same grace, but in a higher dimension. And the more you praise him, the more he adds to you. The more you praise him, the more he adds to you. And all you can say is, Lord, thank you. Thank you. And you can feel his love again. When you don't appreciate him, you want to talk about yourself. You feel like it's you. It's you. It's you. It's you. It's you. And so thereby, the more you talk about yourself, you are bringing pollution to yourself. You're not even cleansing yourself. You're making yourself a reality. You're making yourself a reality. But the moment you're appreciating God, when you share your testimony again, people see God in the testimony. They don't see you in the testimony. But the more you talk about yourself, the more yourself becomes a reality before people. But the more you talk about God, or the more you, you celebrate God in your secrets, and worship God in your secrets, when you not share a testimony physically, people see God in that testimony. Hallelujah. In South Africa, a pastor asked me to share my testimony, what the Lord has done, and share the word of the Lord. So I began to share my testimony for the next 20 minutes. And after about 20 minutes, I told everybody about the testimony. I told everybody to stand up. I want to pray now. All you just have to do is to shout hallelujah. The man of God who was um, who was the shepherd of the ministry at that time, we had uh, <clears throat> we were needing a child. They had only, uh, I think they had only two kids already, and the doctor said they can't have any, any more kids. So, at that time, I began to say, everybody shout hallelujah, the power of God is coming now, the power of God is about to hit this place. People began to scream, and suddenly it was like, shoo, the whole glory. Man, you could feel like a thick cloud of his presence. People began to scream under the anointing. 
people begin to scream and annoy. To my surprise, the pastor's wife, there were a lot of dignitaries there. There were a lot of leaders there. The pastor's wife dressed modestly. She began to roll all over, scatter the chairs, makeup everywhere, screaming. Nobody could hold her. It was, I mean, I, I let me use the word, right word. It was embarrassing. When you look at her, it wasn't she wasn't falling like because she was possessed. She wasn't falling like as if she was possessed. She was falling like somebody was receiving something from God. It was I can't explain it. It was as if she was losing her mind. I mean, just everywhere scattered. She was disoriented. I remember after that service, people were crying. We were heading to the pastor's office. People were grabbing my hand to lay on the ushers were grabbing my hand to lay on their head when we got back to America five months later the man of God called me and said his wife is pregnant with twins twin babies that is the Lord that is the Lord And you know what? Did I pray before that service? Yes, I prayed. What prayer did you pray? A Lord, prove yourself before I go for the service. Prove yourself. And I prayed and I cried. Lord, it's only you. Let them see you. Let them know you. Let them feel you in this service. Oh, shake the atmosphere. Let them know you, oh God. Let the reality of the kingdom of God manifest. Father, be visible in the midst of them. Let them know that you walked in the, in, in the crowd. Oh God. So the whole place was electrified. When God became a reality, they will never forget that. Because when God shows up, He transformed the life of men. Hallelujah. That is what we long for in our ministry, in His ministry. This is what we long for in ministry. It's not the gift. Remember that. But the man behind the gift. The man behind the gift. I'm really be looking for an opportunity whereby God who is India. I'm really asking God that God will be able to manifest one on one before people, whereby He can really engage the people with the love of God. That is my outcry. In every meeting we go to, that the cry of God bursts in the atmosphere. Hallelujah. Praise God. And go forth. And he said, Go forth, stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord, the Lord passed by a great and strong wind, he rent the mountains. Why, why, why was God doing this? Why would God rent the mountains? You are saying, Stand by, rent the mountains, and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. Why was God doing all these things? God was doing all these things to break, to bring this guy to the place of saying, Elijah. Don't be scared. I am the God of the universe. Jezebel is nothing. I can handle her. She's my cre I created her. I brought an angel to feed you. And now I'm dividing the mountains. Open your eyes. There is more power here. Elijah was still discouraged. He, he didn't move in. There was a strong wind. God was showing him all this display. Just as he did to Job. After the earthquake, a fire, and the lost one was not in the fire. After the fire, is still small voice. You know, when, as a man, when you see such encounters, you fall in love with God again. You say, Lord, I love you. I surrender all. Thank you for who you are, Lord. But I guess Elijah was in a place of prayerlessness. When he should have really be praying and have a conversation with God, he was just discouraged. Speaking, he was he felt like he was praying, but he felt he was interacting with God. But that wasn't interaction. That was you are groaning, you are mourning, you are murmuring. And God doesn't like that. Verse thirteen. After the fire, is this small voice, and it was so when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out 
and stood in the entry of the grave. And behold, there, a voice, there came a voice unto him, What doest thou here, Elijah? Same word that came before uh, Adam. What doest thou? Where are thou? Where are thou? Where, where are you? Now, Elijah, what doest thou here? And this same crazy man begin to talk. You know, this is what prayerlessness does. Prayerlessness lets you look at who you are. But when you are in place of prayer, you understand that the grace of God opposes you. He was jealous and I've been very jealous for the Lord. Verse 14. God of hosts. Because the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, threw down thy altars, slain thy prophets with the sword. I even, I only am left. And they seek my life to take it. I only, I even, am left. Because they seek my life to take it. Hallelujah. <laughs> and the Lord said unto him, Go return on their way to the wilderness of Damascus. When thou comest, anoint Isaiah to be the king. Oh, man. You see, you see the Lord, how loving the Lord is. First, the Lord sent an angel to give you food. Second time, the Lord came again and gave you, he sent an angel to give you food to eat. Supernatural food. He prepared you for a 40 day fast. He came again with a mighty visitation. With an earthquake, there was um, shook the mountains, the wind split the mountain, and with that, you are still discouraged. I cannot understand it. With that, you still want to end your ministry. That God was just trying to tell Elijah, repent. All Elijah was to say is, Lord, I'm so sorry. You are God. You are holy. I worship you, Lord. After all that, there is still small voice. What do I start here? What was it? What was it? What, what, if you were the one, what, was this? what, what, would, what would be your response? Let me ask you. When the God says, what do I start here? What, what would be your response? Somebody respond to me. Type it on Periscope. Hallelujah. Please type it there if you are there. What would be your response, everyone? Hallelujah. Let me ask. Uh, what would be the appropriate response? Praise God. Okay, that's your reaction. What would be your response? Everyone, what would be your response? If God says, what doest thou here? What would, what would you say to God? Somebody. Hallelujah. Okay. Now, by that response that says, what doest thou here? What was God look requiring from... What was, God, what was God's response? What was God requiring from Elijah? Somebody, are you there? Uh, my sister in uh, Maryland. What would you do? What was what was God requiring? Hallelujah. Oh, uh, yeah, God is. Uh, I mean, like, uh, I suppose you could have been like, requiring Elijah to simply acknowledge the state of his. The state of what? I can't hear you. The state of his mind. Oh, can you hear me now? The state of his mind. The state of his mind. Okay, what brought Elijah to this place? What brought Elijah to this place? Probably it was discouraged. So if it was discouraged, the first thing is to say is that, Lord, I am discouraged. That was what God was asking for. Your reality, your sincereness. What doest thou here? Father, I am discouraged. I ran away because I'm fearful. And right there, God would have said, it is well. Now, the same thing that happened to Paul. Paul was discouraged. He talked about the thorn in the flesh. What was God's response? 
my grace is sufficient for thee. Right? Right? Paul did not say, this is too much for me. Paul did not say, this is too much for me. Take it away from me. Hallelujah. He didn't say, this is too much. Take it away from me. He said, what? Your grace. He said, Lord, please, Lord, please, Lord, help me. Take it away. He didn't say, oh, um, I'm done. I'm, 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 I'm over with ministry. Please take me away from the earth. That's, that's not the thing you say. You don't say that to your master. Elijah said, I'm the only one. That was a statement of pride. God hates pride. He opposes the pride. You make some statements, I'm the only one. I'm the only one anointed here. I'm the, that, that's not what you say. It's all about you. What you say is, Lord, I'm so discouraged. I need your help. I can't do this alone. Whoa. God will say, listen, my grace is sufficient with thee. Now, before Elijah opened his mouth to complain, after he complained, an angel was sent to feed him, to strengthen him, and to revive him. Hallelujah. Amen. All this God was doing, he says, I know Elijah, because whatever he said after honor, I know he's so discouraged. Let me shake him. Let me correct his mentality. Let me cause a paradigm shift in his mind. Let me let him know that I'm the God of the universe. When you see an earthquake, crack into you'll be trembling your heart instead he was still thinking about a, a, a common woman that gave a message they just spoke and scared him hallelujah and immediately the lord said go and anoint Hazael to be king over syria and jehu the son of nimsha shall thou anoint to be king over Israel and Elisha the son of Eshaphat oh Shaphat thou shalt anoint to be prophet in thy room wow wow meaning the place where you dwell not in your place but in your room so you're not, you're not just going to be the only prophet now. Go and anoint somebody else too. And it came to pass. Remember how Moses murmured because of his stammering. And God said, okay, I'm going to create, I'll find somebody else for you. So we'll help you. And it came to pass that him that escaped the sword of Isaiah shall, shall Jehu slay. And him that escaped the sword of Jehu shall Elijah, Elisha slay. Yet, have I left me 7,000 in Israel? See, God is responding. And all the knees which have not bowed unto bow, and every mouth which have not kissed him. So he departed thence and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen before him. And he was with twelve, and Elijah passed by him and cast his mantle upon him. This is the one that was anointed in his own room. In this Elijah. Hallelujah. And the moment this mantle came, Elijah left all what he was doing and followed um, Elijah. Elisha left all what he was doing and followed Elijah. And from that day, their soul was glued. From that day, God was preparing Elijah to come home and Elisha to take over the mantle. The moment we get discouraged, the moment we ask God, Lord, take me out. Don't be asking God to take me out. Give me another chance. That is what God, um, Samson said. Give me another chance. Give me another chance. But he, wasn't, he didn't say give me another chance. He said what? Give me one more last chance. God had other chances for Samson. But it's prayer. It's what made God to say, okay, I'll give you, the, I'll give you what you, you asked for. Just give me one chance to avenge my enemies. Just one. And what happened? This guy was taken out. And, 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 and I'm so sorry. Samson's life came to an end. Listen to me. 
we must always be desperate to fulfill our assignment. God will not tell you, you son, you are here to fulfill your task or you can't come home. If you make your wrong prayers, it can and might approve the prayer. Because to you, you might think that that is the only thing that God has for you. But when you want to fulfill God's task, Lord, empower me more to finish more. I want to finish more. I want to finish well. I cannot leave this earth until you've empowered me. Hallelujah. I cannot leave this earth until you empower me. Finally, before we go, because I know time is fast spent, this is the last thing I'm going to share with you. Praise God. The mantle of the Spirit of God. Amen. Um, year 2000 and 2007, which is quite a year. Yeah, 2007. This is 2018. So that is what? How many years more? 11 years. Okay. 2007. Go ahead and ask the question. Praise God. 2007. I just came back from London. I was relaxing on my bed. And I was, I fell asleep. While I was asleep, I was taking the realm of the spirit. Amen. When I was taking the realm of the spirit, hallelujah. I came before Billy Graham's house with a pastor, entered the pastor's house. I mean, with the pastor, entered Billy Graham's house, sat on his couch. He began to say, he said, I finished my assignment and I'm so glad I declared the word of the Lord and preached all over the world. I'm so glad I obeyed the call of God. I still feel it fresh. It's written in my books. And so, he said, I thank God now. I'm ready for God to take me home anytime from now. As he was saying this, it's like I felt his heart. I began to hear the sound of his heart. <laughs> Loud. Just like you, 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 you hear the sound in the medical center. <laughs> and I'm like, my God. So I got on my knees quickly. And I said, please, please pray for me before you go. I started hearing him pray. In the name of Jesus, I release unto you the mantle of the Spirit. And, but I'm not feeling any hands on my head. So I opened my eyes to see who he was praying for. He was praying for a pastor. Who I came with. He was praying for the pastor, praying for the pastor. And then very soon he came to me. And when he came to me, it's, he was like, I won't say everything, so I'm just going to withhold some viewers around the world. This is whom I've told you what is going to happen, whatever. Hallelujah. And then he said, here, here is the one I've spoken about. You watch him. And he, he begins to lay hands and he says, right now, let the mantle of revival begin. And it was like a wave of shaking began in my belly. And I shook up from my sleep. My belly was vibrating. And I got up. At that time, there was a family that I was with. I went upstairs, told them the revelation I had. Then I went back to my sleep, shaken by this revelation. When I got back to my sleep, I was in his living room again. Well, at this time, he wasn't in the, on his couch. He was praying for the youths there were young people around and there were so there were a lot of like long children from high school i mean the whole compound was filled with children there were bosses the people on the queue you know like election all standing outside all over and i saw him screaming take it receive it fire i was like this is not billy graham what's going on here but it was him and the children were oh, and they would fall on the ground and i mean it was just a lot of kids so he was climbing on the stairs praying on each one of them 2007 2007. Fire, power, fire. I was like, it's not the why is the place so aggressive? I don't understand, you know. These are young kids. Every year. Now, that time Billy Graham, I mean Willie um, 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 or Robert was still alive. During that time I said, hmm, um, um, maybe it's a robot. Maybe I need to go to Robert's University. Maybe it's a robot, maybe it's a robot or Robert. I kept on replaying that, replaying that, replaying that. I wasn't saying maybe it's a robot. I'm just saying maybe when a robot dies, maybe this is what will happen. But uh, William um, Billy Graham did not die that year. 
he kept on, he kept on. But the way um, Robert died a year after, um, I think years after that event, or two years after, or three years after, he died. Billy Graham kept on, kept on, kept on, kept on being alive. So finally, I was wondering when the revival is going to begin. Some of you did not hear the message we preached on last year. We spoke on the word of God last year, shortly before um, um, what's it, Rea Bonke went to Nigeria to preach his last message. You remember the message I was giving last year about the mantles being transferred shortly, shortly before our New York conference. And I was expressing to everyone and I said, God is about to use people around the world. And I said, the mantle is about to be released in a greater, powerful way. And I said, somebody was reminding me this, so I don't, I don't, I don't recollect. But that shortly before June or before May, Billy Graham will be taken home. I don't know if, you, if many of you heard the prophecy. For 2018, that the revival has fallen. But God is about to take Billy Graham home. And it will be shortly before the month of May or June this year. Hallelujah. And so, when it happened, I knew something that happened. Listen to me. Listen to me. When Jesus died, the graves was opened. And those who have been waiting, those who have died already, they are resurrected with him. Some of you who have died in the spirit, some of you have been buried by the grave. Some of you feel like your ministry has come to an end. You're about to feel resurrection power come upon you. The power of God is about to rock or revive. I'm reading the book called The Hidden Ones. You see this one, The Hidden Ones. The Hidden Ones. They are hidden beloveds around the world. Of God, around, around the world. There are many who have the mantle of the spirit. But God has preserved them for a certain time. Just like God was preserving Joseph for a hidden time. Great as this man of God is, as he has died, because he's one of the greatest soul winners, there's going to be an eruption of real Philip anointing. Philip anointing, who not, they're not just evangelists. But these are people who are signs and wonders and prophetic mentors. These are people who are, live, are living a life of consecration. Right now, it seems like they've been struggling, but now there's going to be a special grace. When God, when Elijah, God took Elijah home, what happened? God began to reveal the hidden ones. Nobody heard about Elisha until God took Elijah home. The emergence of Elijah, the emergence of Jehu, the emerg it wasn't just one person, Jehu, Elijah, Aziel, all of them begin to show up. Because why? A general was taken home. Are you part of the lost army? Are you part of those who God has honored to be a voice? I beg of you, your consecration will involve you in the army of God. When God looks at his archive, he looks at those who are ready. He looks at his weaponry. He looks at those who have prepared their weapons. Remember this. We have left the five virgins, five were wise, five were foolish. Foolish ones, God did not require them. God just locked them. Just said, get out of here. You're unwise. You didn't get your oil ready for battle. You are waiting for us to come and anoint you. Say, get out. But there are those who, when they say three days fasting, they are ready for three days fasting. What kind of fast? You are ready for fasting. Many of you have been putting fasting aside, putting fasting aside. You want God to use you. You know God has plans for you. But you don't want to crucify the flesh. Don't you know your flesh? Don't you know when Jesus comes, God, Jesus will see your flesh? When the mighty revival takes place, don't you think it's your flesh that will play a role? God is not interested in flesh. He's interested in your spirit. And if you choose not to feed your spirit, you, God will give your portion to those who have fed their spirit. 
Don't let flesh steal your portion or steal your place in God. God cannot use soldiers who are full of flesh. A man who went to go and work in the military was angry how soldiers, every time he wants to take a burger, they, they, they come and tell him, go and press up and do, do a press up several times. And they take the food from him. And he was starving. Why? To enroll in God's army. You don't need to be, you must eat, 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 you must eat. No time of fasting. Whether you're at work or you're not at work, you can't fast. You can't fast absolute. You can't enroll in God's army. You're not ready. You're not ready. And I'm saying it now. Fortunately now, there will be a lot of women in the army of God. Because some men cannot fast. They are busy there making money. I don't know who did this to you. The Bible says in the book of Gideon, they asked the men, come and drink water. And it was only men in the camp. Why? Because they were a guy and they were bold and they were focused. Now, many, many men are so possessed with money, material things. They don't know how to take the horns of the altar. Listen to me. One thing the Lord said to me is this. America is a nation that is feared by weapon, by the weaponries they have. There are so many nuclear weapons. Russia, so many nuclear weapons. But they look down on African nations because they don't have nuclear weapons. But they forget, just because you are powerful physically doesn't mean you are powerful spiritually. Spiritually. Spiritually controls the physical. There are so many spiritual weapons and gadgets that God has empowered the toward nations in God that work with God. And you see the physical nations are so empowering themselves with physical material stuff. Don't be like them. Don't be like them. You must be a man or a woman that empowers yourself in fasting. Equip yourself with, deny yourself from food. Many women are doing that now. They know how to really detain themselves from food. The men are the ones that has, they, they, can't, they can't stay away from food. They can't, I don't know how many men in my, in my prayer line who can fast. To see absolute three days, no distraction. The day, the day they say they want to fast is the day they want to eat. But the women are determined. Why won't God give them the mantle? Why won't God give them the grace and the authority? That's, that's why many women in this end time will pick up the mantles of the spirit. For real. For real. And laziness have entered the men. I don't know what is going on. But the men needs to be delivered from this nonsense. Need to be delivered. Something is happening and something is wrecking homes because men are choosing to pursue money. It's not about you pursuing money. If you pursue the altar, if you pursue consecration, listen to me, you will rescue your family from every, every you rescue your family from any form of attack of the devil. Thank God God is using women and thank God God will continue to raise women. But I'm praying for men to get in their place, get in their place. Get to, the, get to your place of authority and your rulership. Don't let man to slip away from you. Listen to me. People don't know my background. I went for a conference where you have Jeff Jansen, you have Joshua Mills. These guys are signs and wonders. When they pray, diamonds come out, your teeth is turned to diamond, or your teeth is turned to gold. People have gold teeth, people have gold dust, those kind of operations. So Joshua Mills sometimes is traveling on, on a three-hour journey trip, on a, on a road trip, and before you know it, he raises up his eyes, and within 15, 30 minutes, God has transported him to such conferences, events. So he had this supernatural work with God, the Philip anointing. We were all there. I was the only black man in the on the whole of our 700 crowd, white people, all of them. And so, because they are not used to my personality. But anyways, when Joshua Mills finished ministry, there were two pastors who I was close to them. I came because of them. And the, the, pastor, the host pastor said, you know what? We want people, uh, ministers to really pray for the crowd. And so I was one of them. They called me out and uh, three other pastors. 
and to all four of us, I was the only black in the whole congregation. And we began to pray. Remember this. I'm not trying to boast. Please, I beg of you. I want to, I'm trying to pass a message here. Why the prayer was going on? I realized that everybody began to swim to my to my corner. They were coming for my, me to pray for them. Why? When you spend time with God, God will deposit something inside of you that will be different. I give you an instance. People are there praying for each individual and they're laughing. <laughs> Receive the wine of God. <laughs> the joy of God. And they're falling. That's not why God sent you there. You don't dare to make people to laugh and laugh and laugh. Laugh to, to what? Stop giving people milk. And I was there. The Lord said, I didn't send you here to do that. These people are filled with demons of molestation. They are filled with demons of depression. These people are filled with all kinds of unclean spirits. Critical spirits. Get out of them. And I said, yes, Lord. See, they are kind of prayers you pray in the closet. You don't pray in the physical. You see, pastors, there are some pastors that lay hands on you. In the name of Jesus, they want to say a whole book of Psalms on your head. That is not where you should pray that prayer. The Lord has trained us. I've watched great men of God and I've learned from them. If you are a man of God, hear me well. Hallelujah. Hear me well, please. I want to communicate this very, very well so you understand what I'm saying to you. When you are in the secret place, you are asking God, Father, as I go out, listen, I've been to India. There are a lot of crowds in India. You can't spend time praying. I was talking to a sister who is also used by God too. Uh, uh, telling her too. You can't be praying one person and praying for your 20 minutes for one person. Why the whole congregation is waiting for you? You're wasting time. So many of God don't know how to minister. They have not learned, they, they have not learned how to distribute the grace evenly. I pray to God. Father, sanctify his hands. That's what God did to Moses. Cleanse his hands from leprosy. Father, empower his hands. As I lay my hands on, on anyone, let them be revived, let them be empowered, let them be delivered, let them be healed from every form of sickness and disease. Let my hand transmit the power of God. Spirit of God, release your grace upon them. Oh God, oh God, oh God, fill them with boldness, drive away fear. Let his hands, oh God, cleanse them, oh God, by your, by, by your power. As your hand comes upon them, let them be cleansed. That's one prayer you pray. And every time you lay hands on one person, or two person, or three, or four, everybody get the same thing, evenly. Because why? Your hands have been prayed on already. You don't go there and start praying for one person. So when I when during this time, this event, touch, power, fire, power, and the whole place was dropping. Come out of her, come out of her. Deliverance, all these places. You don't you don't have time to be doing all this in the name of Jesus. You don't have time. All the Americans were rushing, coming. I'm an American too. Everybody was rushing to me for prayer. For prayer. Why? They saw something different. All these guys were talking about joy of God, the wine of God. No, 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 no. People are dead to be cleansed. Spirit of depression, come out! This one said, oh, my father molested, come out of her! Scream and she will fall. I remember one sister, she happened to be a psychic. She came into the service. I hate Jesus. And she screamed. And she came to me, I hate Jesus. I said, really? I said, let fire! Follow you now. She rolled like 360, turned around 360, scattered in the chair. You, you, you think it's only African that do it? White people do it too, Americans. This lady screamed now to roll the chairs when she did that. Oh boy, you gotta see all the youth came to me. They knew that we like this kind of authority. They knew that all this joy of God, joy of God, laughter. Ha, ha, ha. They, they, those are stupid, those are those are those are childish, childishness. Then they were like, This is what we need. Man, you, I mean, when God begins to use you, man, you feel the, the, the mantle wrapped around you. You can feel the glory cloud. You feel the goosebumps, everything. And you can feel like something is over you. Something is over you. And I prophesy, in this season, that same mantle comes upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. The resurrection power. What will keep this generation is the mantle of prayer. The mantle of prayer. If you can pray, you are a candidate. If you can stay away from sin, you are a candidate. If you can purge yourself and cleanse yourself, you are a candidate for the coming mantle. Prepare, prepare yourself. There is a great mantle that is about to be released on this generation. Stay away from judgmental spirits. Listen to me. All judgmental spirits, critical spirit, hatred spirit, anger, murmuring, gossip, all these things is what slowed down the Israelites. Joshua was not caught up in that. Caleb was not caught up in that. They were just 
vessels of the kingdom that God wanted to use. Moses was caught up in that with anger. But those who have purified themselves, cleansed themselves, sure, God used them as, as a weapon of war. In this generation, God is only raising men, not for signs and wonders, He's raising men who can confront Jezebels. He's raising men who can stand and look at Oprah Winfrey, eyeball to eyeball, and says, the influence and the forces of darkness behind you or behind anyone that is against the gospel cannot be frustrated in this season. I've heard from God. When you speak like that, they could feel the oracles of God on you. Not men of God who are bought by money. Not men of God who are giving them, they will give them Mercedes Benz and they can't even rebuke, they can't correct anymore. They give you before a, a old broadcast, you change your message from repentance to love of God. You preach love of God, day one. Love of God, day two. Love of God, day three. Uh -huh. Day four, prosperity. That is not, you are, you are not correcting. When you go on national television, it's not the love of God you preach on. Everybody can preach on the love of God. You must, if you can't change your life, forget being on the pulpit. Are you hearing me today? Fire is confrontational. If you cannot confront the demons of this generation, forget it. Hallelujah. It's not about wearing a glorious raiment. It's not about that. Your fire must be so radical that when you begin to speak, listen to me, you know you can pray before you come out to your house. Lord, let my words be so convicting. Holy Spirit, use my words to convict the wicked heart. Use my words to convict the media. Use my words to convict people. Convict them to righteousness. You know you can pray that. And God can literally sit on your words. Mingle your words with fire. And you speak little thing, and God will transport your words and convict that heart. He will keep hearing your words. Holy Spirit will keep replaying your words in the heart of the wicked. Till they get so disturbed and they come for repentance. Don't you know that? Simple prayer. You don't need to go on television and be praying, Rabba, Kaka, pray in your closet. Set my words on fire as I go out there. Do your homework. The Bible says Elijah took the key. He said, Now, let the powers of Baal, let the powers of Baal, I arrest it, I bind it, I close the heavens over this, the, the, the priest of Baal, I close the heavens over their prayers, I close the heavens and I arrest that God of Baal, I bind the queen of heaven, Astaroth, he arrested it and took the key, put it in his pocket, went there, day and night they were calling on Baal, Baal did not answer, they were calling and calling and calling, why? Something happened. Baal could not respond because why? The Bible says they caught themselves. Why? Baal has answered them before. But Elijah had binded and arrested the powers in the heavens. That's what you do. You don't do it in the physical, you do it in the spirit. Glory to God. If you must pray and take over the city, you must consecrate yourself. Don't be a mediocre. I'm calling the men to come to that place of righteousness and boldness. You have been eating pizza and pizza and food too much. You are allowing the women to fast and fast and fast and get their place, their portion in God. And very soon you'll be jealous of them. Because God is using them and God is not using you. You need to stop that. If you can't fast, forget about the power of God. If you can't fast, forget about the Holy Ghost sitting on you. Leave the, leave the altar and let other people occupy it. Some of you are so enslaved by mammon that you don't, you can't take three days off and just wait upon God. You can't go on a journey and just see God's face. If it was now time now, Jesus will come. I want to start have disciples. Do you know that the, the people that will be in his disciples will be what? It'll be only women. Because you men are lazy. Only women. Peter will be a woman. Um, 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 Andrew will be a woman. James will be a woman. I'm telling you right now. If Jesus was to come to start over his ministry again, it will be women in his camp. Because many men in this generation, they are lazy. They want the women to be on fire. And they leave, they leave everything for the women to be on fire. They leave the women to call the prayer points. They leave the women to do long prayers. But they themselves, they are so egoistic. They don't want to. They don't want to worship God. They don't want to pray. They don't want to be on fire. What is it? How will God shake the men? How will God raise the men? No. It cannot happen again. Many women of God now are being prophetess. Many of them are being used by God. The men, they don't want to pay the price. Very few men. So filled with lust. They are lusting after women, lusting after perversion, all kinds of nonsense. Stop this and sh shake it off and grow up in God. I'm tired of men who just still just be mediocre. Can you just get hungry for once with God? 
put food aside and see God's face. My goodness. Are you going to be in a cave of, of Jezebel? Lost, 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 perversion, lost, perversion, lost, perversion. When are you going to grow up? Please, enough, enough, of, enough of this childishness. It's too much. A lot of men, you, you can't be a dog. You can't be a dog here. I want to be a dog in heaven. Go and ask Solomon. At least Solomon repented before. He enjoyed, he enjoyed, the, he enjoyed all the virgin women. Right? Before he went to heaven. He said, I'm sorry. And the guy still made heaven. So in heaven, they were applauding. You are the wealthiest man. You got so rich. You enjoyed all the wealth. You enjoyed the wealth of the wicked. You enjoyed the wealth of, the, of, the, of, of, of Christianity. You also enjoyed worldly women. You also enjoyed demonic women. You also enjoyed godly women. And you still made heaven. That was the only man I've seen in history that tried everything like a buffet. Ate, slept with women, enjoyed gold, enjoyed silver, enjoyed money, and enjoyed food, enjoyed the idols of the father's house, everything is still made heaven. I beg of you, men arise. Sarah was not heard. Rebecca they didn't hear them as spiritual women. It's not, it's, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not right. It's not right. It's not right at all. When I see men on this prayer line who are not taking hold of God, they are shying off from God's work. And women are taking role. It's very painful. It's not right. Stir up yourself and awaken yourself. Come out of that glutinous spirit. Enter into the place of prayer and fire. And fire. Let the power of God rock, begin to boil through you. I want some men to understand the power of God upon their lives. Thank God for my brother Joe. God is using him wherever he is now. Powerfully. Does God provide prophet with someone? What does that mean? Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Thank God for Joe. God is using him now. Fasting now every weekend. Every other week he fasts. Three days. He asks me, he says, Man of God, how can you how can we grow? How can I grow like you? I said, Man of God, let me tell you my secret. When I was young, every weekend. Hallelujah. Every weekend. God can raise you up. Don't worry, brother. Every weekend. I say sometimes I'll put food away. Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Hmm. Hallelujah. You're not a good preacher. Not good. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Every Friday. Are you talking about yourself or are you talking about me? Every Friday. Uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Thursday, Friday, Saturday. No water, no food. And then Sunday, I go to church, I celebrate, and I start eating. But Thursday, Friday, Saturday, the authority of God will come upon you. When you go to church on Sunday, you can feel the presence of God. What is it, what is it with a man? No, just start fasting. Just start consecrating yourself now. Start consecrating yourself and start praying. And you see God start anointing you. Do your personal fasting. You men, you need to put food as away. Put food, put sex away. It's too much. Don't take it as a God. If you can direct your, your family, you want your wife to be directing you spiritually, that's insanity. You men need to come to a place of authority. Ah, man, I don't know what is going on. You don't do your spiritual exercise, but you want the Holy Ghost to dwell in you. Your hunger needs to be very, very, you need to be very hungry with God. Take hold of God in your fasting. Put food away, you will not die. Tell your wife, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Friday, Saturday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, no, 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 no food. Or no sex. And the Sunday you can resume. It's not going to kill you. Your wife is the one that breastfeeds. Your wife is the one that carries your kids. So why you like? Why you like? Why you like feeling like you're going to die? You're not going to die. Just separate yourself. If you have to go to a prayer camp, go and do it. There are people who are not men of God who are going to prayer camps to go and fast. You go to church. You see, there's the women that can pray. You go to church. You see, women that are the one that are leading prayers. They are screaming. They are on fire. What, what's happening to the men? What's happening to the men? You can't even hear their voice. He, like Jezebel have killed them or killed their fire. What is going on? The Lord will help us. 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 God has called them to be of a helpmate. 
to help us with our vision. But now, they are the ones receiving the vision. And we men now, we are now running behind them to help them fulfill their vision. Because you, you refuse to follow, you take your place in God. It is well. We are going to pray, asking the Lord, Holy Spirit, help me. Help me to stand strong. Help me this day to stand strong. Help me this day to stand strong. In the name of Jesus Christ. Help me this day to stand strong. Help me this day to stand strong. I'm telling you, a lot of women will receive supernatural mantles. The men of the men are not ready yet. They are not ready at all. They are ready to argue. They are ready to challenge the man of God. They are ready to argue on doctrines. We are not ready to pick up their fire. Pride has entered them. And until you crucify that old nature and become a servant in the eyes of God, the Samuel anointing will come upon the women. You will see. Watch it. You can be judging them as Jezebels, but you will see. There are some women that God is pre preparing them and they are moving in the eyes of God. It's been a while I've seen a man going into a long fast. I've been a while I've seen a man going into a days of fasting or travel out 12 hours, leaving the family to go and fast. It's been a while. It's been a while. What is, what is going on? The women, you tell them, let's fast. They are ready to fast. The men, oh, eh, this. All kinds of excuses. I'm telling you, if Jesus was to come now, he will parade his disciples, and will be, mostly of them will be women. The only ones that will be there will be the men that are hungry. But right now, I don't see women who are hungry. I don't see them. There are very few. Very few. It is well. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. Praise hallelujah. God. Well, we have to go now. Hallelujah. I spent so much time. 7 30 already. God bless you. Hallelujah. Be strong in God and let the Lord uphold you. Let the Lord guard you this very day. Let the Lord sanctify you. Let the Lord circumcise your heart in Jesus' name. You have a question. Let me know quickly. Tell me quickly. Go ahead. Hallelujah. Don't just say I have a question. Just ask me the question. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. What is the question? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm. Quickly, quickly, before we go. Hallelujah. What is the question? Quickly, quickly. How do you become spiritual minded? How do you become spiritual minded? Number one, I told you, praise and worship shifts your focus. Number two, pray in tongues, pray in tongues, pray in tongues. Hallelujah. Number three, why pray in tongues? You're reading the Bible, the book of Psalms. Meditate on the book of Psalms. Make it accustomed to you. Hallelujah. Read, meditate on the book of Psalms when you wake up and when you're going to bed. Hallelujah. And also to thank you, Lord Jesus. Also to document your prophecy. Document the word of the Lord that was given to you. Amen. Ask God to abide in your heart. Ask God that his word be replayed in your heart. Praise God. And also to the last one, have godly friends around you. Surround yourself with godly friends. Godly company. Amen. Let them minister to you. Let them speak to you. Amen. Hallelujah. When you have that friends, have praying friends around you. Circulate your friends, your, your, yourself. Don't isolate yourself. But have a company of friends that fast. Have a company of friends that pray. Have a company of friends that love the word of God. Hallelujah. And they will provoke you to a place. Amen. They will provoke your hunger. Amen. And they will stir it up. So you, 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 when in my school, I had friends, company of friends who were hungry, who were able to go the extra mile. Even when I'm tired, they encourage me, they propel me, amen. Hallelujah. And they release an unusual hunger inside of me because I associated with them. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, you have my number, 612-701-5983. If you are, if you are overseas, it's going to be plus one. Amen. 612-701-5983. Send me a text. Send me an information. You need me to support you in prayer. Send me a text. I will call you, pray with you. If you have some dreams, you can text me about your dream. Hallelujah. I will text you back and give you an explanation or revelation of what you want me to do and or instruction of what the Lord wants you to do. Amen. And we can pray together and I cancel whatever it is. Again, the number is 612-701-5983. Five nine eight three six one two seven zero one five nine eight three. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. The Lord cause His face to shine upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Lord loves you. Moi. Good night. God bless you. If you have to call me, call me. Amen. God bless you now. Bye bye. Plus one. Plus one. Plus one. Hallelujah. God bless you. 
Wow, 29. Are you kidding me?